Hi guys, uh, welcome, thanks for being here. Um, we are the team, like you said, that went to uh, Limpopo, South Africa to help implement a uh, biology curriculum over there. Uh, that said, I'm Mac Hodges, I'm a fourth year biology and psychology major. And my name is Julie Lee, I'm also a fourth year uh, psychology major. My name is Jason, I am a fourth year biochemistry major. And we have a fourth member, Heather Lee, who cannot be here today, unfortunately, but we'll meet her in just a minute. Um, to kind of give you a little roadmap of what today looks like, uh, we'll start with Heather giving a little um, background information about why we chose the project we did, how we got involved with that. Uh, we'll talk briefly about the design, why we chose what we chose, how we chose it, and uh, how that ended up playing out for us. Um, how we kind of piloted and partnered with the local Charlottesville School to see what kind of what, uh, you know, our own teaching and presenting skills, if we had any at all. Um, the implementation, the actual boots on the ground part of the experiment, we we're actually teaching over there. And then finally, the follow up, the kind of the assessment period where we are now. Um, so with that said, we'll see what Heather has to say about the background. Imagine we lived in a society with little science education, where schools do not have the resources to share our modern understanding of the world, where students never get the opportunity to become scientists, to make new discoveries, or to create life-saving technology. This is a reality for the majority of students in rural Mpopo province, South Africa. The World Economic Forum recently placed South Africa 140 out of 144 countries for the quality of its education system, and 143rd out of 144 for the quality of its math and science education. As a result, the majority of students perform poorly on college matriculation exams and avoid careers in science. This negatively affects the South African economy and the future of youth in these areas. To combat this problem of science education, we travel to an impoverished community in the Pogo province to partner with an outreach education program, the Bulani Science Resource Center. While dedicated to improving science in classrooms, the center had almost no interactive content in their curriculums and was in need of better resources. Over seven weeks, we worked with center faculty and staff to lay the foundations for hands-on, engaging biology education tailored to the community's needs. Okay, so kind of like Heather said, there was this huge and obviously global demonstrated need uh, about the lack and paucity of uh, generally science and math education over there. Um, and given our uh, distinguished faculty advisor's previous relationship with the area, uh, we got asked to uh, along to kind of partner with the University of Vinda over there and um, help kind of reestablish a, a refreshing biology education for these high school kids. Um, so uh, that, that in mind, we wanted to kind of establish three central tenets of our program to kind of wrap our heads around. That was feasibility, adaptability, and sustainability. Um, the feasibility component came from kind of uh, three things. Actually, came from a uh, you wanted a a target population, a physical location, and resources. Now resources obviously being the, uh, the generous JPC Foundation, as well as uh, other lab donations from our uh, partners with our advisors. But the um, physical location came from the Vuwani Science Resource Center, which is basically a central hub in Vuwani, um, South Africa, which uh, buses kids in from surrounding schools to give them the standardized uh, science education there. Um, chemistry, physics, computer science, what have you, but most importantly for us, biology. Um, so that said, we uh, had accomplished those three things, so we thought we had a feasibility component here. The adaptability and sustainability kind of work together. Um, we wanted to pick projects that were both interesting to the students, the faculty, but also things that uh, would be able to be maintained once we left, and you know, our, our stock solutions of athenium bromide were exhausted. Uh, we wanted things that they could actually do uh, once we left, and our, our passion had, had left the, their borders. Um, so that was our, uh, our goal with the adaptability and sustainability component there. All right, so my name is Julie again, and I'm going to be talking about the module design. Um, so our preliminary module design um, started out with an equipment, um, $20,000 worth of donated equipment to our advisors. Um, along with that equipment and the JPC fund, we designed um, a range of different uh, science experiments focusing on molecular biology and genetics. 
And along with the experiments we designed, we also put together um, presentations, PowerPoint presentations that went along with each experiment in order to give the students a um, sort of theoretical concept kind of background for the experiments. Um, and along with that, our research portion of our project um, included evaluations uh, like conducting surveys, um, giving out questionnaires, and conducting interviews with not just the students, but also the faculty and local educators around the Volani Science Resource Center. So in order to hit the ground running as, as we arrived in, in South Africa, we wanted to make sure our our modules, our experiments, and our lectures were of, of appropriate caliber. So what we did was we conducted a pilot study where we went to local Tandem Friends School here in Charlottesville, right next to Monticello High School, where we, we taught 10th grade students in Ms. Jocelyn Camerata's uh, biology class. And there we had several sessions where we introduced different kinds of lectures and different kinds of uh, experiments, such as our our DNA extraction experiment and our, our pineapple enzyme uh, experiment. And over there, we accomplished two things. One, we learned that first and foremost, lectures and experiments have to be interesting. They have to be engaging. They have to be, uh, they have to be, they have to incite interest in any of the students. Uh, in order for any kind of success to happen in South Africa, you know, this is our top priority. If anything was boring, you know, we would lose the interest of students in South Africa, you know, just like that. The second thing we accomplished was we had, we, we gained appropriate experience in teaching. Um, we had, we taught for, you know, several hours, you know, as a combined total. And we really got to get a feel of how we should interact with 10th grade students, 11th grade students. Um, and that was... That was, that was very, very helpful to uh, you know, hit the ground running as we arrived in South Africa. So after our pilot study, you know, we, we were, we were, sorry, we were, uh, our goal was to implement stuff in South Africa. So after around 40 hours of travel door to door, um, in, in, late, in late June, we arrived in South Africa where our, our, our our schedule was a bit uh, was, was a bit full, to say the least. Um, so the way our seven weeks broke down in South Africa was we had four weeks, five weeks of teaching with four groups of students, around 30 to 40 students each. So every week we would be teaching five to six hours with the same group of students from one school uh, for the entire week, and this was four times. So in that in that, int that intimate setting, we taught about, I don't know, uh, around 160 students. And after these five weeks, we had a, what's called uh, the National Science Week in South Africa. So this was a little bit different, where we were traveling around to uh, the University of Venden and other local high schools uh, to demonstrate a wide variety of different things, such as lectures, an HIV lecture, and uh, many of our experiments. And there we taught over, over 1,500 students uh, in a very, very large setting. So well, our, our modules were focused on, focused on two things, or three things. One, provide appropriate, you know, engaging bio biological material for, for students. Uh, the second was also to teach uh, the interns who we were working with at the Bulani Center to train them how to use the equipment, train them how to, how to basically teach what we taught the students uh, you know, after we left. So what our goal was to have the interns at the Bulani Center teach uh, everything we had brought over. So we had to you know, take some time to, to you know, train the interns there to make sure everything uh, was a smooth transition after we left. And the third thing is we had to adapt a lot throughout our entire seven weeks. We obtained a lot of feedback, um, good and bad, uh, 
about, about, our, about our modules, whether they were too hard, too difficult, too esoteric. Um, and also we had to adapt to environmental limitations, such as sometimes we didn't have running electricity uh, or running water. So we had a lot of challenges to deal with. But overall, our feedback was pretty positive. All right, so as Jason mentioned, the feedback we gained from the WANI and local educators were very positive. Um, one teacher told us we did experiments that we thought we would never be able to do with the science equipment that we brought over and also the science knowledge that we provided for the interns and the students. Um, and the students, initially when we conducted our pre-survey, they told 92% uh, of the students informed us that they performed less than five um, Exper hands-on experiments in biology um, when they were in 10th or 11th grade. So that's very little exposure to hands-on experiments. Um, and then our post-survey, did this week make you more interested in science? And 82, vast majority, said a lot, um, ranging from the questionnaire ranged from not at all to a lot. Um, and then do you think this week was very useful to you? 72% said a lot as well. And those are our two biology interns that we work the most closely with at the Wawani Center. And kind of going back 360 degrees to what we were focusing on, um, adaptability in response to our question, you know, what do you think about the work we did at Wawani and um, how do you think it impacted the center? They said in a very good way because we learned a lot from you guys. We learned to use a lot of equipment that we wouldn't have had the chance to use otherwise and we learned so many new experiments. And and um, in response to the question, you know, what parts of our um, work will be sustained at the center um, when we're gone? And they said, I think we can do both. We can do the lectures and the practicals. By doing the practicals, learners have a lot more questions, and kids most of the time leave without understanding everything, usually. Um, but if you start with the theory first, as we did, then they understand everything better. Um, just to kind of wrap things up really quickly, um, we wanted to uh, just demonstrate that we had some types of sustainability. Um, we left over there these very dense uh, packets, including uh, in like entire ma like manuals of everything we needed to use, anything from pipetting to uh, spectrophotometers. I have no idea to use one of those, but luckily Jason does. And um, so between the two of those, we left plenty of resources for them to uh, continue on. There are certain limitations, new uh, interns coming in. To, um, that need to be re-indoctrinated to our system, but hopefully they'll embrace what we had to say. Um, current uh, follow-up and uh, email correspondence has indicated very positive that they're following through with what we have to say. Um, anyway, uh, overall, I want to say thank you so much to the JPC for giving us this amazing opportunity. Um, I know each of us and our advisors will never forget the opportunities and the people we've met over there. So again, thank you very much.